In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. We come to God's presence, not seeking justice for ourselves, but mercy, realizing we're sinners, we depend upon his mercy. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy in us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, by whose wondrous grace we are enriched with every blessing, grant us so to pass from former ways to newness of life, so we may be made ready for the glory of the heavenly kingdom. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Be seated for the reading. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. The assembly condemned Susanna to death, but Susanna cried out, O eternal God, you know what is hidden, and are aware of all things before they come to be. You know they have testified falsely against me. Here I am about to die, though I have done none of these things which these wicked men have charged me. The Lord heard her prayer. As she's being led to execution, God stirred up the Holy Spirit of a young boy named Daniel, and he cried aloud, I have no part in the death of this woman. All the people turned and asked him, What is this you are saying? He stood in their midst and continued, are you such fools, O children of Israel, to condemn a woman of Israel without examination, without clear evidence? Return to court, for they have testified falsely against her. But all people returned in haste. To Daniel the elder said, Come sit with us and inform us, since God has given you a prestige of old age. But he replied, Separate these two far from each other, that I may examine them. After they separated one from another, he called one of them and said, How you have grown evil with age. Now have your past sins come to term, passing unjust sentences, condemning the innocent, and freeing the guilty. Although the Lord says, The innocent and the just you shall not put to death. Now then, if you are a witness, tell me under what tree you saw them together. Under a master tree, he answered. Then he replied, your fine lie has cost your head, for the angel of God shall receive a sentence from him and split you in two. Putting him to one side, he ordered the other to be brought. Daniel said to him, offspring of Canaan, not of Judah, beauty has seduced you, lust has subverted your conscience. This is how you acted with the daughters of Israel in their fury and their fear they yielded to you. But a daughter of Judah did not tolerate your wickedness. Now then, Tell me the what tree you surprised them together. Under an oak, he said. Daniel replied, Your fine last cost you also your head. For the angel of God waits with a sword to cut you two in, in two, so as to make an end of you both. The whole assembly cried aloud, blessing God who saves those who hope in him. They rose up against the two elders, for by their own words, Daniel had convicted them of perjury. According to the law of Moses, they inflicted on them the penalty they applied to impose on their neighbor. They put him to death. Thus was innocent blood spread that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures, he gives me repose. Besides vessel of waters, he leads me, he refreshes my soul. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. He guides me in right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff, they give me courage. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. 
Even though I walk in a dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. Only goodness and kindness follow me all the days of my life. I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. Even though I walk in a dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. I bring from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. But early in the morning, he arrived again in the temple area. All the people started coming to him. And he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? They said this to test him so they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to run the ground, run the ground with his finger. <clears throat> but when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he bent down and rolled on the ground. In response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. And Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, from now on do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. In the first reading, we hear about two wicked judges who falsely accused the woman of committing adultery. They acted like they wanted justice for her, but they really wanted to take revenge against her for not doing what they wanted. Jesus shows us in the gospel how to respond to Christ for justice because those who wanted justice against the woman committing adultery did not want justice against themselves for their own sins. It's really foolish for us to demand justice for ourselves when we really need mercy. None of us can stand up to the true justice, to pure justice. If God were only just, there'd be no hope for us. But all of us depend upon God's mercy. As Jesus was merciful to the woman caught in adultery, he wants to be merciful to us as well. We must also show mercy to others. Jesus offers us mercy, but he also reminds us to receive his mercy, we must truly try not to sin again. As he told the woman today, I do not condemn you, but do not sin anymore. May God give us not the justice we deserve, but the mercy we need so much. And may we show his mercy to others. Amen. Trust in God's love and mercy, let's present him our needs. Let's pray for the grace to be compassionate to others and not to seek revenge or justice, true justice, but rather mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For all those who may have the coronavirus or other serious disease, that they may find hope in God's love for them, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Pray for all health care workers, for all those who risk their health and their lives to take care of those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the intention of today's Mass, for the opposing soul of ones of all the senior, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for all the intentions we have in the science of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Heavenly Father, we thank you for always hearing our prayers and always having mercy on us. When we become instruments of your mercy to others, we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice from your hands for the praise and glory of his name. For our good and good to our church. Grant me prayer, O Lord, to prepare yourself with the holy mysteries. We bring before you as a fruit of God of repentance, a joyful purity of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. You've given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that free from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold right to the things they eternally endure. And so with all the innocent saints, we praise you as without any way claim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by setting down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed into one of his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to a fullness of charity. To God, Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, who may merit to be chorus into your life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins by the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance to her will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. Let's offer you a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I invite you to make a spiritual communion. Lord Jesus Christ, I believe you're present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Even though I cannot now physically receive you, I ask you into my soul spiritually and give me every grace I need and keep me from all sin. Amen. Let us pray. Strengthened by the blessing of your sacraments, we pray, O oh Lord, that through them we may constantly be cleansed of our sins, and by following Christ, hasten our steps upward toward you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.